Hello, I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan. Many times parents ask me when their child gets sick, should my child go on antibiotics? Joining us today is Bill McNett, who's a pediatrician for Nemours, and he has the answers to all the questions that parents commonly ask. And also joining me is my co-host, Paul. Hello, Jay. So I know this. there's a differentiation for us between the bacterial diseases and the viral diseases, and one gets treated in, with some differently than the other. So what is the difference between yeah. bacterial and virus? Not an easy answer, though, or a quick or a straightforward answer. Uh, bacterial infections are the uh, organism that are bacteria that cause these infections are made differently, and they respond to antibiotics virus infections, and there are so many different kinds of virus infections, is very different. I mean, viruses are something as simple as a simple cold that, as we all know, there's no cure for. There's something as serious as HIV, which is also a virus. So it's very difficult to lump them all together and saying, you know, is this a virus infection or a bacterial infection? Maybe one of the ways we should do this is, is this a serious infection versus maybe not as serious infection? Because we're constantly talking about this in the office with families um, because they frequently do come in thinking my child has a fever. It's an infection that I should be getting medicine for that fever and that medicine is going to be an antibiotic. And so we do spend a lot of time educating our families about what infections are and that there are different kinds of infections. And the two more common infections are virus infections and uh, bacterial infections. And so many times you get a cold, your child gets a cold, and they have a fever and runny nose for a little while, and then it persists for three or four days, and people feel, I just need an antibiotic to get rid of this. Is sure. That, is that a common scenario for you, too? Uh, it's very common for parents to come in and think, you know, when I was a kid, I got antibiotics, so now my child should also get antibiotics. Right. You know, we, I, I think we're approaching medicine in a different way, it's hopefully smarter, um, and that if we know the natural course for the cold and we can kind of talk parents through it, knowing that a cold is going to start with fever for a couple of days and they're going to have a runny nose and the runny nose is going to go from clear to yellow to green back to clear and finally gone again. That parents think, oh, when it turns yellow or green, this has to be a sinus infection and sinus infections I know are caused by bacterial infections. And so a lot of this is education, it's just kind of talking parents through it. So if we can tell them what to expect and they see that that indeed is happening, it makes it much easier for the process and we can get away without using antibiotics. And one of the things we're worried about is the overuse of antibiotics in the population in general is that, you know, if we use too many too often, that bacteria are getting smarter and that they're going to change themselves that makes the antibiotic less effective if we continue to overuse them. So we're trying to be good stewards of the world by not using antibiotics too frequently or inappropriately. And, um, you know, we're using a lot of antibacterial soaps and gels. And what's your recommendation on that at the house? I think they're fine to use. Um, I like using them actually when parents are traveling. I usually recommend that they take them with them if they're going to be in airports or places where there's going to be a lot of people, even going to the mall. You just don't know what germs are out there. And, you know, if you put your hand on the rail, so have a million other people and a million other germs. Within the house, maybe I'm not as concerned about it, but we do recommend hand washing in some form. Mm -hmm. um, if it's using antibacterial gel or soap, uh, that's a easiest way to, to prevent infections from happening. So usually when I see a child, regardless of what kind of infection they have, I always will talk about make sure everyone's washing their hands. Great, great information, yeah. Is there also a concern of um, the health of the gut and the GI tract with too many antibiotics? Well, you know, the gut is lined with, with bacteria, which we call the good bacteria, and that uh, the antibiotic is very indiscriminate. It will kill the bad bacteria in the ear, but also the good bacteria in the gut. So I think we have to be very careful of that. And one of the things that we've been doing is if we do have to use an antibiotic, is we're also recommending at times using a lactobacillus or acidophilus, which is the good bacteria that you find in yogurt or that you can actually buy at most health food stores to replenish the gut after we've wiped out the gut bacteria. So one of the common complaints I get actually from parents is, you know, I came in to the emergency room or I came in to see Dr. McNett and we waited and then, you know, he just told me it was a virus and there was nothing he did for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I go through my explanation, but what's yours? Well, one of the things I try to do when parents come in is actually acknowledge that their child is sick. You know, it's so easy to come across as saying, well, your child isn't sick enough. So, uh, so why did you waste my time? And I think that's a very bad message to send to any family. Mm -hmm. um, they're concerned about their child. At the end of the day, when we are taking phone calls and, and 
deciding if uh, we should see the child or not, our last question is, do you want us to see your child? And if the answer is yes, we'll see them. Yeah. Because I think it's really important for parents to feel comfortable with what's happening with their child. I usually will talk about how lucky we are that this isn't a bacterial infection, that this is a virus infection, their child is strong enough that they'll be able to fight this infection on their own, that this is you know, not serious at this point, what to watch for, that if, if certain things happen, right. then if we should see their child back again, or that indeed it may be a bacterial infection, we just don't have the clues right now to make that. So you've that. checked them out, you've made sure things are okay, and that is just reassuring and there's no threat to Yeah, it's probably just as reassuring to us as it is to the parent mm-hmm. that their child is okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are times where we find things we didn't expect to find. Great information. Bill, what's the latest for treating ear infections? Does, uh, does every ear infection get treated uh-huh. with an antibiotic? Or? Yeah, I mean, that's probably the most common bacterial infection that we are going to treat. And in the last couple of years, we've really been trying to get away from treating every abnormal eardrum that we see in the office. So what we're doing now for children less than 12 months of age, if, the, if we're examining them and their eardrum is abnormal and they have fever or they seem to be in discomfort, we will treat them for their ear infection with an antibiotic. Above the age of one, what we're asking parents to do is actually just wait for a couple of days to see if the ear infection can clear by itself. We also know that viruses can cause ear infections. And if we wait a couple of days and we treat pain aggressively so their child is not in pain, again, frequently we can get away without having to use antibiotics. So this has been great. I've learned a lot. I think if I can summarize, there is a difference between bacterial and viral infections. Some of each can be very serious, and some of each can be treated with just time and your body's own defense mechanisms. Antibiotics don't work for everybody and uh, and for everything. And they should only be used with careful advice from your provider. That was perfect. The only thing I would add is, you know, medicine has changed pretty dramatically, especially in pediatrics in the last 20, 25 years, and that we now have vaccines against the most common type of bacterial infections that we used to see in children, pneumococcus and also haemophilus influenza type B. Because these are now routine vaccines, we just are not seeing the types of serious bacterial infections that we used to see, you know, 20, 30 years ago Mm. when I was first starting in medicine. Well, so we have time because the serious bacteria have been taken care of to some degree. We have time to wait this out and not overuse antibiotics. Yeah, at times we do. Yeah. Great information. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Sure. To our listeners, if you have a question about this topic or if there's another topic you'd like us to explore in a future pediatric chat, you can send it to us by using the question portal on our webpage. And be sure to view our library for more pediatric chat programs. I'm Dr. Jay Greenspan, and thanks for listening.